Okay, it's inspection time. So I've spent a uh, number of hours um, crawling through the paperwork uh, and the logbook, airframe and engine, uh, and has brought up a few things that I want to um, look at and also go through with you on. Um, now, if you're a Eurostar owner, you're going to be a very aware of, of some of these things. So. Uh, maybe look at this if you're potentially looking at a Eurostar or, or particularly if you've got a, a, an older Eurostar that um, uh, that may need looking at. Like I say, there's, Eurostars can be uh, difficult inspections. They'd certainly take a lot longer to inspect. Uh, and unfortunately, the help out isn't as readily as available on Eurostars uh, as you would like anyway. Um, I've already obviously done the airframe service on this so I'm quite aware um, uh, of the aircraft and looked at some service or parts. Shelly now has also uh, done the engine service and she's flagged up a few things as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start my inspection uh, on this aircraft, I've already recorded that in the logbook, uh, and see where we get up to. Like I say, there's a couple of MPDs, I mean I've gone through the logbook, uh, I can see what MPDs have been done. There's one or two that haven't been uh, marked in there, so I'm going to assume that they haven't been done, but again, um, they probably have been, but they're not in the logbook, I've got to assume that they haven't. So I'm going to go through those, and like I say, there's there's two or three that I want to uh, flag up uh, with yourselves. So I'm going to crack on with this inspection, um, and if anything comes up, then I'll uh, I'll bring you in. Okay, so just uh, had a good look over the engine and uh, I want to bring some things just, just for awareness really on the kind of things that we can find um, on an inspection. Uh, rubber parts are one of the main things uh, to be looking for because they do fail over time um, and it can be within 12 months, It can they can last five years. I mean, Rotax recommend that all rubber parts are replaced every five years anyway uh, and I must agree with that. Um, but there's other things that we can do to aid um, the life of these rubber parts and one of them is the way that we connect them to uh, to make them look neater and, and on first presentation this engine looks really really well and and I'm not saying that you can sit there and go oh yeah that's gonna be fine then but it does mean that you you can look better um, when it's well presented uh, and one of the issues I've found is where the scat hose, so the the uh, air, hot air that's coming from the exhaust that's pumped into the cabin, scat hose itself can be quite brutal. Um, you know, and I know varying issues even with C42s where scat hoses have just literally destroyed uh, push rods. Um, so yeah, I noticed that the scat hose is just rubbing on the oil pipe there. Um, there are other things like the uh, water return is also rubbing on the engine mount there and if you look it's the way that it's actually been zip tied to the uh, actual airframe. Standoffs are a very good way to stop two parts rubbing uh, against each other but the other side is that you know you can also put on zip ties too tight that may uh, restrict flow of either coolant or fuel but uh, the zip ties themselves can slowly uh, cut into uh, the pipes. Um, other issues that we seem to have is uh, the pipes are just starting to crack um, at the connection ends. Now this obviously they're, they're probably forced over a barb and so they've been stretched a little bit more than the rest of the pipe. But on this engine they're using a different type of clip than, than, than we use. I have a, uh, a small concern on the fuel pump. Um, there is a, an MPD out for um, fuel pumps that are marked up. AC which this one is um, 
So I'm going to have a quick nose on that um, MPD to see if that relates to this fuel pump because I have a suspect that it's going to need a new fuel pump. And then we've got some obvious things like the module mounts uh, are cracking as well. Uh, and I've also found a small anomaly on the oil elbow. Um, so yeah, I'm going to keep on looking. I'm getting a bit of a list. We'll see what, uh, where we get to on there. Uh, let's carry on with the inspection. The first um, MPD that I wanted to go through with you was 2015001. Of course, you all know what that one is. And this is all to do with the flap pins. Now, it's very reassuring that the guy in his paperwork, the owner in his paperwork, has printed off all of the mandatory permit directives and they've got dates on them of when they were uh, when they were inspected as well that's great um so let me just find this one for you uh first one being the wing flap um correct engagement of the actuator pins and so on a eurostar the flaps drop out of the wing and there's a there's a rod that goes through there that's actuated and it needs to be a set distance and we're given measurements here uh, if the inspection reveals exposed length of the pin between 17 and 20 uh, you must adjust the pin in, in accordance with the associated service bulletin so we're going to check with that if it's over 20 mil then we've got to contact the manufacturer uh, to see what's any issue so what we're going to do is going to take a ruler going to measure one side then we're going to measure the other and then we'll record what our measurements are um okay so another of the mpd so another of the mandatory permit directives that i also wanted to go through with you was uh, 2014 Zero, zero, 002 uh, and that is to do with the wing fuselage fairings so if you look at the aircraft obviously the wings are bolted into the fuselage there is a, a a cover that goes on the top side and there is also a fairing that goes on the underside now those fairings it's windy today those fairings are riv nutted and bolted to the main fuselage so there was a, a reported issue where this edge was rubbing against the um, the wing skin rivets and so first of all we're checking to make sure that this is still intact and will still serve a purpose it looks okay it's had a number of repairs so it's obviously something that's been uh, managed um, so what we need to do uh, is crawl underneath the plane and check that line of rivets to make sure there's no damage So the final MPD that I wanted to go through with you guys is the MPD 2016007E and this is the rear fuselage bulkhead inspection. Now this um, needs, uh, needs to be done um, every thousand hours, hundred hours or on its annual inspection. Um, it hasn't done its 100 hours um, since it was last inspected, but obviously we need to do it as part of its permit inspection. Now, there is a, a service bulletin that comes with this, which is very, very useful. Uh, and what we need to do is inspect the rear bulkhead. So if you see the, the tailplane there, right at the rear there is a, a bulkhead um, where the tailplane uh, is attached and uh, it's a, a strengthening piece and there are two types so the older type is uh, like a horseshoe shape and you know, the new type is a circle and we're, we're getting sheared rivets in the top corners uh, which then could cause cracking and there's some very useful pictures uh, and we need to inspect that uh, to make sure that there aren't any uh, issues this can be done through this can be damaged through normal operation or from excessive use of using the tail as a, as a lever arm moving around in the hangar so you'll see a Eurostar owner who might get quite upset if you're moving his aircraft around by dragging it by the tail anyway there are four ways or inspection uh, methods that we can use the first one is that we can remove the rear fuselage floor access panel and view it from there which is one that we will do we can remove the tail cone on certain Eurostars. This one um, is riveted in place, so I'm in no rush to do that one. 
uh, we can boroscope the viewed affected area which I have a boroscope so that is the one that we'll do or we can remove the horizontal tail plane uh, for all affected aircraft D I would only do if I suspected that there was an issue like I say we're gonna get a good um, viewing of there um, we, what we're gonna do first of all is we're gonna use the rear inspection panel so we can get a good view in there we're gonna stick a camera in there uh, uh, a boroscope in there so we can get a good view we're going to stick a camera up there and take a picture and then we can explode that uh, uh, and take a closer look I'm then going to come in from the tail uh, end uh, with a boroscope so I can have a look on there as well so quite a, a, a detailed uh, inspection quite difficult to do uh, can take a bit of time just to get your eyes on the bits that you need it comes with practice again I won't for one minute express to be a Eurostar uh, expert, uh, probably one of the reasons why I'm filming this and sharing it with you for uh, posterity, so I can go, oh yeah, remember when I'm doing all this? I'm guessing I'm going to do all of this out. Okay, so that's the majority of the uh, external inspection completed, so now I'm going to jump in the cockpit and, uh, and go through the internal uh, checks. Um, there is a fair bit to do in there, um, so what we'll do is we'll jump in. Uh, and I'll let you know if I find anything. Again, there's other stuff that I want to show you uh, on uh, checking, particularly on the landing gear and things like that. Um, but yeah, we'll see if anything crops up. Take it from there. I'm gonna let Alan crawl all, all over this plane. Once he's done that, I'm gonna start getting the covers back on. Uh, as discussed, a few advisories to go through with the owner. We'll see on how he wants to proceed on there. Uh, and with a bit of luck, we can get this aircraft in the air and check phone. Clear prop. 